Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. In this video, we will be taking a first look at the game Fall of Empires. This is an infantry attacks game from Avalanche Press, designed by Mike Benninghoff, uh, PhD. And this game is basically the World War I adaptation of the platoon level tactical series Panzer Grenadier, which is why I'm taking a look at it because this is going to be part of my platoon level tactical series as we're going to do a second round of looks at each of the four series I did in the first round which would be the Panzer Grenadier series, Nations at War, Platoon Commander Deluxe, and War Storm series. So let's take a look here. So this is a bagged game. Um, Avalanche has somewhat moved away from boxed games. And a lot of their games come in what they call playbook format, which is basically just kind of a Ziploc bag with, you know, the, the contents kind of insides like this. And it is a book. I mean, it is bound and everything. But, uh, yeah. So you can see this is Fall of Empires, the Eastern Front, 1914. In the late summer of 1914, the German general staff informed their Austro-Hungarian allies that they would stand on the defensive against their common Russian enemy. Undeterred by this reality, the Austrians pushed forward with their plans to attack. After initial successes, the outnumbered Austro-Hungarian forces fell back with severe losses. Fall of Empires is a standalone game in the infantry attack series, our World War I equivalent to the long-running Panzer Grenadier series. Units are companies and squadrons, and the 40 scenarios represent actions from the opening battles of 1914 on the Eastern Front between the Russian and Austro-Hungarian armies. So let's take a look and see what's in the bag here. So here's our book. It is bound, as I mentioned. So you can see it's a bound book. We have... Um, Basically, this almost, well, I guess it's not actually the same thing that's on that back. It does talk about the Austro-Hungarian Imperial and Royal Army. Won the first two major battles at Krasnik and Komarov, but suffered such terrible casualties that the pre-war regular army never really recovered. There are 40 scenarios in here and 10 chapters. You can find more scenarios and battle games linking those scenarios together with the scenarios from this game in our book, Franz Joseph's Armies. So here are special rules, since this is part of a series. And just like Panzer Grenadier, there are series rules, and then there are rules for each uh, game within that series. So you have leader rank titles, if you are interested in, in knowing that for both the Austro-Hungarians and the Russians. Um, dug in Cossacks. There's Cossacks. So this is basically the scenario book. So you see there it's chapters and then within the chapter uh, you have scenarios and it's almost kind of it's almost like playing a, a campaign. And then you have chapter two. And as you read, there are 40 scenarios in the book. So that is that. And we have maps. I'll hold off on the maps and save them for last. So here are the series rules. Okay. So it is somewhat, it is similar to Panzer Grenadier, but there are differences, obviously, for the differences in warfare between the First World War and the Second World War. But let's start at the beginning here. So you have an introduction. Infantry Attacks is a series of games simulating tactical ground combat during the First World War. Each game in the series includes many scenarios allowing players to simulate a number of battalion, regimental, and brigade, brigade level actions. This second edition rules set covers units, combat practices, and weapons that were commonly in use during 1914. All right, so... Here we have the layout of our playing pieces, which is laid out very similarly to the way they're laid out in Panzer Grenadier. You have your unit class uh, with its NATO symbol, unit type, national insignia, its movement rating, direct fire rating, 
you have bombardment fire for uh, field artillery, unit class, field gun, unit type, 76.2 millimeter example, movement, and then your, your leaders. So just like in Panzer Grenadier, leaders are going to be really important in this. You use leaders to activate your uh, your units. So you have an initiative determination phase, just like you do in Panzer Grenadier. Then you'll have action set. You'll have we well, have initiative, then a bombardment phase, then your action phase, marker removement, marker removal, rather. Action segments. And so here you have the leaders, the leader stuff, single unit or leader self-activating, all units stacked together in the same hex, activating at once with or without leaders. So they can they can activate without leaders, but that limits their possible actions. A single leader acting, activating and directing any and all units of his own type in his hex plus the six hexes adjacent to him. So his hex and the ones around it. And then you can have a single leader activating and directing a chain of units and lower ranking leaders of his own type in several hexes through subordinate activation. Also like Panzer Grenadier. And then you have opportunity fire. We have a stacking limit, three combat units, no more than two of which may be companies. We have the overstacking effects, of course. We have movement, we have transport. Leaders, and so you have a leader. There are special leaders for Cossacks or Pioneers. How leaders activate, morale checks. Leaders are also important for morale. You have spotting. Uh, and how spotting works with the limiting terrain for the ter uh, terrain effects chart. Elevation, so we got line of sight stuff in here, right? Line of sight. Examples, this one is blocked, this one is not because it cuts through a hex that has buildings in it. Then we have an example here and an explanation of, can it see it? Does it have line of sight? Can it be spotted? So there's spotting and line of sight and you need line of sight to do spotting, but just because you have line of sight, you still not be able, you still might not be able to spot. Then our combat rules, column modifiers, etc. I'm not gonna go too deeply into this bombardment. Only because we will play the game or I will play the game and you'll get to see it. Direct fire, assault. I will make sure that I include insult, assault in the playthrough so that you can see that. Uh, opportunity fire. Morale. Cavalry. So you have cavalry rules. That would be something that would be maybe a little different from Panzer Grenadier. Although there is, there are cavalry units in Panzer Grenadier as well. And uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Thirty-four pages. Um, I think being familiar with Panzer Grenadier will help. You have an artillery fire plan sheet, which I guess you'll need to make copies of this. They give you one. There is a note at the bottom, permission to photocopy. So you're going to pl plot your artillery fire. And so that's a big difference, I think, from, from Panzer Grenadier is how artillery works in, the, in this game. And we'll get into that later. We have our player aid. So here's our direct fire card. Again, really similar to, to uh, Panzer Grenadier with your, um, like, the M for morale checks. The number, and you have to add a modifier to the morale check. So M1, you would add one to the roll to make it harder to pass your morale check. And so on and so forth. Um, X would be a, a step loss, etc. You have modifiers based on entrenchments, town woods, heavy woods, jungle, etc. The other side has your bombardment table. So very similar to that in its effect, well, similar in, in the way it works. And we have our initiative chart, which again, looks exactly like the one in Panzer Grenadier. It's all based on time and each turn is 15 minutes and you go around in, in clockwise 
fashion, like, like you're looking at a clock. You have six at the bottom and, and 12 at the top. Kind of, kind of familiar here. Spotting ranges are impacted by the, by the time. So you would have a dawn time and then your spotting range will be reduced if you're, you know, if you're before dawn. Night stuff, night spotting range is only one hex. And here we have our salt chart. Again, um, pretty, pretty similar, except we have a Z here instead of an X. That one is single sided. Here's our terrain effect chart. Again, just kind of like it is in Panzer Grenadier. You have it here. The one thing I, I don't like is no pictures, but you can, you can get around that. It continues on this side. Then all the notes are on the back or on the bottom and the back here. Pretty straightforward. Here we have our markers. So these are our markers for moved, fired, smoke, drum fired, disrupted, cold steel for assault. That's used in assault, op fire, entrenchment, your, your markers for time. And uh, I think this is a shelling demoralized okay dug in spotted whole bunch they're all two-sided so that you know you, you might need a whole bunch of disrupted markers and on the other side of those are spotted but on on the, on the other side of your moved fired markers are a bunch more of disruption markers uh, we have a little flyer in here for the other games um, i actually have all of these and then we have the counters for the game. So here, this is counter sheet two. Which the green threw me off. I'm so used to Russians being red for uh, from the Soviet Union time. So these are the Russians. Again, we kind of saw the, the layout with the movement and your direct fire, etc. Here are the leaders. Some of these would be Cossacks and then regular leaders. So here are our Austrians. You can see the, the leaders are in German. And so again, it's pretty similar. There's two sheets here, apparently. Um, so you have your, your Austro-Hungarian Austro forces and your Russian forces here. And now let's take a look at the maps. If you are familiar with uh, Fire in the Step that we played as the, uh, the Panzer Grenadier entry in the platoon level tactical series, this will look fairly similar. A lot of browns and muted kind of dark earthy tones here with forest, fields, a town. You have a, a road. It's all pretty, pretty straightforward. So that is map number one. Well, I don't see a zero two, but we do have a zero three. So here is zero three. This one has some water. Again, a lot of forest. You have your water here, a bridge and a road and a town. Map four. Map four has some elevation on it. So we have a hill over here. You can see the crest line and the, uh, the, the height. And then again, fields, town, forest, road. Map number six. A lot of forest on this one. And the road going through. Pretty straightforward. And we have 103 here. This one's a little bit more interesting, I think, I would say. Because here we have a hill, right? So you have a 20 foot rise in elevation. And then you have another 20 feet to go to 40 over here. Um, lots of trees, a little bit of some rocks here. So rough, I would assume. A couple of other hills here, here, and here. And another town, some fields, and a lot of clear open space. Well, maybe not a lot, but some clear open space. So this would probably be some pretty good defensive terrain in this area right here. And then we have 105. And if you're wondering about like the texture and the thickness of this, this is a fairly thick card stock. There is some gloss to it. You can see it reflects my lighting. 
Um, it has a nice texture to it. It feels really nice and smooth. And this one is another one with multiple levels, a couple levels of, of elevation here. Kind of the town is, is sort of it's situated on a hill, apparently, because we have the crest line running right through the middle of it. And we do have another road here, more fields, some forest along the edges, a couple of uh, hills here, a ridge, another hill on the, another couple hills over here. So some interesting terrain over which to fight, I believe. And that is the uh, bulk of this. So again, this is Fall of Empires, the Eastern Front 1914 Infantry Attacks game by Mike Benninghoff. And from Avalanche Press, this one I will be doing a playthrough video on in the not-too-distant future. So that's going to do it for now. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking or sharing or both. Uh, if you are a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. If you're not a subscriber um, and you want to consider subscribing, I would greatly appreciate it. But either way, I hope you enjoyed the video and will return for more content later. That's going to do it. My name's Joe. This has been Hexed Encountered. And until next time, happy gaming.